GPS, Global Positioning System. You use this stuff in your everyday life. It's there in your navigation system in your car. It's built into your mobile phone so you know where you're going. It's what the government uses to track you. But what we're talking about today is using GPS as a speed input module so your engine management system knows how fast you're going. Let's start with why you would use a GPS speed input module. So if you've got a Haltec dash, Haltec ECU, if you've got another brand of dash or another brand of ECU in your car, but you don't have a speed input coming in from a drive shaft speed sensor or a gearbox speed sensor, the GPS module is exactly what you're after. Now, we know that you can fit a speed sensor to the car. You could put it to a spinning wheel. You could put it to a tail shaft. You could then run those wires into the engine management system, then send that information out via CAN to your dash to display so you know how fast you're going. You can definitely do all that. It's labor intensive to add that speed sensor onto a tail shaft and it's not always a known quantity. You don't know what brackets you're gonna need. You don't know what thread sizes are gonna fit in which gearboxes. So to take all the complexity out of it, the GPS puck, it's got three wires. It's got power, it's got signal ground and it's got the signal wire. We'd wire them directly into the dash or directly into your ECU. The calibration is already known type the calibration in and start driving and you're done. A GPS speed input module is actually a pretty crazy thing when you think about it. This thing is communicating with satellites that are in orbit all around the globe and it's detecting at least two satellites, getting information back about their distance relative to this thing, then determining how fast this thing is moving. And it's doing that at an update rate of 10 hertz or 10 times a second. It's pretty crazy to think what's actually happening in this tiny little box. Now let's get to wiring it into your dash or into your ECU. So the parts that are supplied when you buy the GPS puck are the main body of the thing. It's got a Deutsch DTM 3 series connector on it. It gets supplied with the mating connector. That's also DTM 3. This one's the one that's got the female pins. This one's the one that's got the male pins. It comes with the GPS antenna with a length of cable on it. So the idea here is that the GPS puck will be mounted near your dash or behind the ECU. We then screw the antenna on. That cable will run all the way up. You might want to sit that on top of the dash. Uh, you might want to put it on the roof of the car to get better GPS reception. Basically, this thing is line of sight. So the better that this thing can see the sky, the better it's going to, the faster it's going to communicate with those satellites. Um, you don't want to be putting this thing under a seat or upside down or something like that because you simply won't get GPS reception. Likewise, any extra cable that's left over, don't leave it bundled up like this. On a GPS receiver, um, whether it's on a Haltec device or whether it's on your GPS navigation tool in your car, whatever the case, you want to run this cable in long loops instead of curled up like this and you'll find that you'll get better GPS reception. Once you've selected a good place for your GPS antenna that's got a clear line of sight to the sky, you can peel that backing off and then sticky under that, stick it down, run the cable, then connect it in there. Um, now's probably a good time to mention that a GPS puck, if you drive through a tunnel, it's not going to have line of sight, it's not going to see satellites, and as a result, we're not going to get a GPS speed. So, if you're in a really built up city area or if you're driving under a tunnel, don't expect your GPS speedo to work. It's going to sit at zero kilometers an hour. So let's wire this thing in and then do some software walkthroughs to help you to configure it directly into your IC7 dash or into your Haltech ECU. I've already pre-terminated our Deutsch pins. So on the side of the Deutsch connector, we've got number one, which is a 12 volt switched 12 volt supply. I've picked that up straight off the power supply for the dash, or I could have picked it up off the power supply for the ECU. Pin two is in the middle of the Deutsch connector, and that's our signal wire. That's a digital output that's gonna to go to the speed input on the dash, so the direct speed input on the dash, or to any digital input on your ECU, and then we'll assign that as your vehicle speed source. The third pin, so it does, it's labeled number three on the side of the Deutsch connector. 
is our signal ground. I've got that into the signal ground output of the dash, or I could have connected it into the signal ground of the Elite ECU as well. So for the Deutsch DTM pins that are supplied with the GPS puck, I've already crimped these. I used these tools. So these are the 20 gauge DTM crimpers. Um, they're available on our website. They're available from lots of places. Um, really handy tool to have. Should be crimping Deutsch pins with this. If it's a one-off, if you're in your garage, you might be able to use the back of your pliers to crimp them in. Um, heaven forbid you would use a soldering iron and put the wire in and then solder it to the back of it. I would never recommend doing that unless that's your last resort. And in that case, it'll also get the job done. On the other side of this wire, just for this demonstration, I've pinned these straight into the dash plug itself. So an easy way to do that, all I've done is I've pulled the 34 pin connector out of the dash, use my fingernail to snap the big white connector on the bottom here and that opens this AMP one mil super seal plug. I can then pull pins in and out of it. These are the crimpers that I've used to crimp this. They're also available on our website. If you're crimping ECU pins into your dash, into your ECU, into any brand of engine management system, please use the right crimpers. Uh, there's no substitute here, unfortunately. You can't use pliers. Not a good idea to try and solder onto them. Don't try and bite it. Just down the track, you'll have so many problems. So if you are doing this, please use the right crimpers. Now, I don't want to steal wiring Dave's thunder, but we do get heaps of crimping questions. So I may as well do one of the crimps here just to show you how I do it using the Haltech red handled crimping tool. We'll take just a little bit of wire off the end with our wire strippers or our cutters, just like that. We'll take one ECU pin and we'll cut that off the reel if that's how you've got it or sometimes they're supplied singly. Now, when we sit that in here, what I want to happen is I want that first bit of the crimp over the copper wire, but I want that back bit to hold over the insulation. And that's what's supporting the wire. The top bit is where our electrical, our electrical connection is happening. So now I'll grab my crimpers. I'm gonna use the E terminal. I'm gonna go right over the top here. Crimp, a little bit of pressure in there. And you can see what's just happened. The crimp looks beautiful. The wire's all the way up the top. Now, all we have to do is crimp the back section, which holds the support of the wire, and we're done. So, grab that, put your slider in there. There we go. And that's our crimp done. So if you strip the right length off the wire, if you crimp onto the insulation with the back side of the pin, if you use the right crimpers, there's absolutely no reason why you'd be wrestling to get this pin into your AMP one mil connector. It should be a seamless effort. Um, if you're having problems getting the pin in, pull it out, have a look at what's going on, check over your crimps, start again, recrimp, get it back in, should slide in effortlessly. So in our breakout Deutsch connector, I've got my switched power, I've got my signal wire, I've got my signal ground, I plug that into my GPS puck, I plug my dash back in, Ugh. I turn it around, the dash is going to power up, our red light's going to be flashing. We're inside, that means that I expect it to be flashing red, we've got no GPS reception. Um, it'll go solid green when we've got GPS reception and the car is stationary. It'll be flashing green when it detects that the car is moving. So that means that if it's flashing green, it'll be outputting pulses. So now let's do the software walkthrough and we'll figure out where I've wired it to on the IC7 dash and how I've configured it to work. Then we'll test it. If I come across, one of the things we might do before anything, we're gonna get a help, ICC help, then over the side here, dash wiring, IC7 dash wiring diagram. I'll scroll down here a little bit. So just in case you've lost the paperwork for the dash or whatever the case, you don't have it with you. If you've got the software on your laptop, the wiring diagram is available if you click on that help button. If you'll have a look down here, I've wired the ground for the GPS sensor into pin 30. I've wired the output into pin 33, which is labeled vehicle speed. And I've spliced the power supply into the same power supply that controls the dash which is pin three up here. 
I know that I've wired it correctly because the light is flashing on the GPS puck. The next thing we're going to do is configure it. So if we go to system, then on the right hand side here where it says speed, at the moment this dash is configured to get the data or get the speed data directly out of the engine management system via CAN. In this case, I'm going to click on that and I'm going to change the speed input to direct. I'll press apply. Then I'm going to come down here to channels. I'm going to search for speed. Speed from direct input. Select this one. And I'm just going to make sure that down the bottom here, speed calibration using Haltec GPS speed input. That's ticked. So what that's done is that's selected a calibration in the background, which is telling us that the dash is expecting 5,000 pulses per kilometre in order to give us a reading of 60 kilometres an hour. So that's our calibration speed and that's our number of pulses. So that's done. I'm now going to go send to dash. Down the bottom you can see it's sending that information into the dash. Once that's in, all we need to do is go for a drive. We need to get some GPS reception and we need to verify that it's working. But sometimes even that's just a little bit too complicated. So there is a nice simple way to prove that what we've done has just worked. All I need to do is hold the GPS like this. There's a button on the back of it. The easiest way to get to it, if I just gently squeeze the puck front and back, one, two, three, it puts it into like a test mode. And what you can see now, our speed input on the dash is showing 60 kilometers an hour. It's in the test mode and it's outputting 5,000 pulses per kilometer right now. It's showing 60 k's an hour. I know that it's working. <laughs> Lucky I got my wiring right, that would have been awkward. The setup's done. This thing is ready to mount the GPS puck and be on your way. Uh, to get it out of the test mode, all I'm going to do is power cycle the ECU or we could unplug and plug the GPS puck back in. So off, back on again. When the dash powers back up, we're going to see the speed in the bottom right hand corner here is at zero kilometers an hour and that's going to tell us it's come out of test mode. But that's not the end of this video. Let's take the speed signal out of the dash. We'll now put it into our Elite 2500 series ECU and show you how to configure the software to wire the GPS puck directly into the ECU. While I've got the IC7 software open, I'm going to go to system. Then I'm going to change my speed from direct back to ECU. I'm going to press apply. Then I'm going to send that into the dash. Remembering that I'm about to pull the speed pin out of the dash and I'm going to wire it directly into the ECU. Then we'll open our ECU software. So I'm going to pull my USB cable out of my dash. I'm going to put it into my Elite 2500. Look how fast that goes online. Oh, makes me happy every time still. Probably into eternity on the Elite platform how quick it goes online. So now I'm going to go speed. Vehicle speed. I'll right click, enable vehicle speed. I'm going to enable a drivetrain sensor. Perfect. Drivetrain sensor. So I'm going to set the calibration speed to 60. Drivetrain pulses per kilometer. Off the instructions that are included with the GPS puck, it tells me to type in 5,000 pulses per kilometer. Down here, I can set up an input. I'm going to make it B7. The reason why I'm choosing B7 for this demonstration is because I know that 7 is the top right hand corner of the ECU connector. It's a really easy pin to slide in and out, especially if you've got a really heavily populated ECU connector. So that might work well for you as well. Okay. Then we've got some settings here, which I'm going to read just straight off the instructions. Edge select, falling. Sensor type, hall effect, pull up, disable. Okay. Up the top here, my thing's flashing, so it's telling me to reset the ECU, so I will do that. I'm then going to bring up a speed channel in the software, so I'm just going to type in speed, vehicle speed, okay, at the moment it's at 0.0. .0. Now I'm going to leave the software open, seeing here that B7 is the connector I'm looking for, so I'm going to turn everything off when I'm working on any of the wiring stuff. I'm going to pull the speed pin 
the signal pin out of the connector was for the dash, and I'll plug that back in. Then, sorry if it's a little bit noisy, I'm gonna pull pin B7 out of my ECU tester. I'm gonna put my GPS puck straight in. Slides in nice and easy because all the crimps are really nice. Turn everything back around, turn our tester back on. In the software here, I'm reporting zero kilometers an hour. Zero kilometers an hour on the dash as well. If I put this into test mode again, so I'm just gonna hold that in the middle. The light stopped flashing. In my Haltech software, I'm displaying my 60, close enough, 60.4 kilometers an hour. On my dash, I'm showing 60 kilometers an hour. So now what's happening is the signal is going from the GPS receiver into the ECU, out of the ECU via CAN, into the IC7 dash, showing 60 kilometers an hour. You can wire into your ECU or you can wire it into your dash. Personally, I like putting it in the ECU if you have the, uh, the option to do that because now that I've got speed in the ECU, I can use that channel for idle control functionality. Um, I can use it for things like gear detection and I can use it to tune against. So I might want to set up a speed limiter or a, 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 you know, 110, 120, 160 kilometers an hour. Um, that information into the engine management system is super handy to tune against. So into the ECU if you can, if you've run out of inputs or if you don't have a Haltech ECU in the car, into the dash and she's away. And that is how you install a GPS puck into your IC7 dash or your Elite Series ECU. Uh, look, the beauty of these instructions is that they work for all cars because the calibration is exactly the same. So it doesn't matter if you've got an MX-5, an RX-7, an uh, Evo, a uh, Daihatsu Charade, you're going to use the same calibration, the same wiring technique and the same inputs. Even if you've got a boat or an aeroplane, something like this to get out GPS speed, this is the way to go, nice and easy. As always, thanks very much for sticking to the end. My name's Scott, catch you next time.